Hello everybody, my name is Ollie. you are watching Void Space Alpha and today we're going to be speed painting some space walls. So with introductions out of the way, let's dive straight in. We have our model which is a Primaris Reaver and we have already undercoated him with the Fang. Now I've done it out of the pot because I couldn't get hold of the spray. However, if you're going to be doing a load of these, I would recommend getting your hands on the spray. If you can't, it's not a bother. Just thin down some fang on your palette and give it a few very thin, very smooth coats until you get a non-chalky finish. But uh, with the priming out of the way, the first thing we're going to do is cover the entire model in Agrax Earthshade. Now what that's going to do is just allow us to pick out all of the detail on the raised areas for our dry brushing and it's also going to shade all of the recess areas. So there's no science to this, get it all in wherever it pulls, move it around and we'll come back and see what that looks like in a moment. And here we have the finished miniature with the Agrax Earthshade all dried in, if I can get him into focus for you there. And the first thing you'll notice is he is a very, very dark blue now. So we are going to rectify that because what we want to do is keep the recess shading but get rid of that change in tone that we have achieved by covering the entire model in the shade and we're going to get our fang we're going to get some on a large dry brush here work it into the bristles till we're just leaving a bit left and you can always test this just by giving it a quick dry brush there and we're just going to go around the model and we're going to completely overbrush every area that we can quite lightly but you know regularly is that the right terminology we're going to go over it a lot to make sure that we build back up to that solid blue foundation and we're just leaving the shade in the recesses and you can already see there that the front of the armor is already back to that deep rich blue that the space wolves are famous for and with that step done, you will see that our Space Wolf is now back up to that incredibly deep blue that we have on all of the armor panels with just the shading left in the recess areas. I apologize that the focus isn't fantastic, but I'll try and hold him in some areas for you so you can get an idea of what you're looking for. Specifically around the chest here, you'll notice the chest is now quite a flat color, but around the collar and in these little recesses where the grenades and the sigil on the front are is still shaded. That's the kind of thing that we're looking for. And that means that we're ready to go to our next stage. So you're gonna need some Storm Fang, which is a Citadel dry paint. Now, dry paints from Citadels are paints that are designed to be used, surprisingly, in a dry brushing fashion. So we'll get a little bit on our brush. We're gonna work it into our bristles quite well here. In fact, I may have got way too much on my brush there. But you want it so that hardly any is coming off your brush because this is this is us faking the highlights right so let's see again on the rim of the model the base see how much we're leaving behind so yeah we want to be incredibly incredibly light here so i'm just going to hold him by the head to start with and we're just going to give it a little brush over and again i think i'm leaving far too much on that so we'll try again, try on his shoulder pad here. And you'll see what we get is quite a bright, stark highlight. You see along the bottom of this shoulder pad here and on this wrist equipment. So we're gonna do that over the entire model, come back and see what he looks like. So we've done that over the entire model. And as you can see, we have quite a highlighted, well, dry brush highlighted model now. Now, don't get disheartened when you see a lot of that Storm Fang light blue build up on the really super raised areas like the pouches and the scabbard and the grenades and stuff like that, because we're gonna go over those. But you can see we've got nice like crisp lines here on the belt and on the collar and on the shoulder pads. We're just faking those highlights on the different plates of the feet. So we are ready to go into our next stage. Now the next stage is going to be to base coat all of the leather items. And we're going to base coat all of those leather items by getting some Rhinox hide on our brush, thing it down a little bit with some water, mixing that in nice. 
Now, because we are using a brown over a blue, quite a light blue actually, with all that highlighting that we just did over the top of it, probably only gonna need one coat of this to get a solid cover. So we're gonna do every pouch that he has, and Reavers typically have quite a lot of pouches, so we're gonna block those all in here. We'll do his scabbard on his back as well. And we'll come back and see what that looks like. And here we have the finished article in the leather, in any case, and you can see we've got that nice, rich, deep, dark brown for all of the leather items. Now, little hint or trick for you. You'll notice I've done the leg strap here, but there's a leg strap around here as well. I don't know if you can see, if I can get it angled right. Yeah, you can see it there. That is incredibly difficult to reach, and you can only see it by turning the model upside down and looking at it from the back. I would suggest don't paint that because I tried to paint it and I got brown everywhere and ended up having to touch things up with the fang and then dry brush them back up to the same level as everything else. I think the next stage for us is going to be base coating all of the silver areas, which is going to be the combat knife, the casing, or not the casing, the underside of the bolt gun, the vents on the power pack, etc. So let's do all of the silver now. We're gonna use lead belcher, give it a good shake, there we are. We'll get some lead belcher on our palette. Finding some, finding a clean area on our palette is a bit of a challenge at the moment. We're going to water it down so that it flows nicely. Grab our model and then just begin to block in all of the silver areas. And once we've done that, we'll come back and see what it looks like. And here we have it, all of the silver has been done. We've done the underside of the bolt pistol here, the blade and handle of the sword, his little cable that connects his arm, and we've got the power pack vents and, well, the big vents and the little vents, I guess. We've also dropped onto this trim here, which is going to be gold in the future. I think that anything that you're gonna paint gold you should base coat silver first because it just makes it pop that much more. And I've kind of been a little bit OTT and dropped a little bit, I don't know if you can see that, of lead belcher on all of the buttons of the pouches just to make them pop out a little bit. But yeah, we're gonna crack on with the black now, which we've already got some on our palette. We're just gonna thin down. We've got way too much on our palette, but we're gonna thin it down nonetheless. Quite thin, you can always thicken it back up again. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to trace in all of the armor joints, so this material under here. We're also going to do the majority of the bolt gun and any other areas that we think should be black. So let's crack on with that. We'll come back and see what it looks like. And there we go, a very quick step. We've just touched in that chest sigil, the handle and the, what's that, the finger guard, the guard of the blade on there, and just this little piece down here in gold. Now that is all of the layer paints done. So all that's left to do to get this guy on the table is pop a base on him and give him a quick wash on the areas that we've painted. Now for the leather, we're going to use Agrac Thirst Shade. And for all of the black and silver areas, we are going to use Non Oil. So let's crack on with that. So grab your model. And then just buck it on the Agrax Earth Shade onto the leather areas, like so, making sure that you're not leaving any pools or residue. Do the, um, the gold in the Earth Shade as well. It's a softer wash, so it won't drown it out. And then we'll come back and see what that looks like with Agrax Earth Shade on all of the leather and Null Oil on all of the metallics. Back in a moment. And there we have it, all of the washes are dried, except noticeably that bit, which I haven't noticed until I started recording. But all the washes are done, so we have our darkened metal areas now, which is great, and it's just added so much more detail and character to the model. All that's left to do is to drop a base on this space wall. So let's do a Fenrisian style base, which I think we're going to achieve with some Sterland mud, which we're then going to dry brush with Japanese Uniform World War II by Vallejo. Then I think we'll probably chuck a grass tuft on there and lob on some of this Valhallen Blizzard. So let's do that now and see what it looks like. 
and we're back with our miniature with Sterling mud on the base which gives us this nice little textured mud effect now word to warning if you're going to do these obviously the basing is one of the last things you're going to want to do and it does take a long time to dry i chucked this guy in front of a, a little space heater i've got in my office and he still took well over an hour so it's dry enough for us to do the dry brush of the Vallejo paint, which I forget it is Japanese uniform World War II. So we're going to grab some of that, get it working it into our bristles, get most of it off, but work it right in there. And we're going to go around and just give it a little scrape. So just the raised areas on the base are being picked up. So if you can see that like that. And that's the effect we're going to get. So we're going to do the whole base now and then we'll come back and see what it looks like. And once you've done the entire model, you will have something that looks a bit like this. I've also glued on a dead grass tuft here as well. And just ma mainly, mostly blocked in the base with black. Now it's going to come off because we're going to be handling it. But it does mean that when we do a final black rim before we do the varnish, it will just go on a lot smoother. So yeah, we're going to chuck on some Valhallen Blizzard now to give him that sort of Fenrisian Space Wolvesy fighting in the snow feel. So we're going to grab some on our little Citadel texture tooly thing here, and I just think I'm going to smush some of it into the grass tufts and work it around the base to give it that sort of semi-frozen permafrosty look. So we'll get some of this on, see what it looks like when it's dried, and uh, take it from there. And there you have it. That is, to all intents and purposes, one finished Space Wolf that I would not be ashamed of seeing on the tabletop. So if you've enjoyed it so far, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, comment, do all that good stuff because it really does help us out. Um, but we're going to take this guy a couple of steps further. Let me tell you what we're going to do. We are going to use an incredibly small brush, not that one, this one. And we're going to do some off-white on his little face guardy thing here. We're also going to block in this shoulder with off-white purely because we want a nice solid but quite uh, light base coat to go over with some Uriel Yellow. Uriel Le Oh my god, that's a tongue twister. Uriel Yellow. Wow. Uh, and yeah, that, give, that will be like the... Uh, that's the, the, the mark, isn't it? That's the sign of a Space Wolf as a blue dude with a yellow shoulder pad, in my mind anyway. So we're going to do that. And we're also just going to drop a couple of drops of either Mephiston Red or Flesh Terrors Red, I haven't decided yet, into the eye sockets just to give him a little bit more character, give him those red eyes that uh, you think of when you think of Space Wolves. So first thing I'm going to do is grab my off-white, block in the face mask and the shoulder pad, and we'll take it from there. So we have dropped in the off-white on the shoulder and the face mask. We've dropped some Mephiston Red into the eye sockets. I don't like it, but I think it's going to be fixed with the wash stage. So we're going to wash the face mask, Reichland Wesh... <laughs> I can't talk today. Reichland Flesh Shade. Um, after we've done the yellow on here, because we'll wash the yellow shoulder pad with Reichland Flesh Shade as well. And we'll put a probably a crimson wash into the eye sockets as well. So I'm going to go and block in this in yellow now, and we'll see what it looks like, and then we'll wash it. And there's the yellow shoulder pad done, so we are going to give that a quick blast of Reichland Flesh Shade on the yellow of the shoulder pad and the white or the off-white of the face mask. And then using a very small brush, we're going to drop some Caribou Crimson into the eye sockets. So we'll do that now and see what he looks like. And here we have the finished model, varnished as well. The shade darkens up the shoulder pad quite a significant amount but I think that would look completely fine with a decal on there which would be the end goal anyway and I have to admit that the the face plate looks a lot better with the right flesh shade wash on there purely because it just picks out the detail between the teeth markings or the, or the grooves of the face plate so it, it just adds that bit of definition and the eyes are a lot more muted so I like that so there we have it one finished Space Wolves Primaris Reaver if you like what you've seen or think it's useful in any way, shape or form, please feel free to hit the subscribe button or leave a like. If you've got anything to say about it, even if it's just how crap it is and how you would do it differently, please drop the comments down below. And in fact, drop a comment down below for the next chapter you'd like to see because I've got tons of just random space marines lying around that we should absolutely paint up in all of the different chapter colours.
So yes, thank you very much for watching everybody. I've been Ollie, you've been watching Void Space Alpha, and until next time, bye.